Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Well, welcome one, welcome two, welcome three, four, and five. I am Katie Patrick, joined as always by David Ferrazzo, and we are giving you that reminder yet again. Oh, that's right. Yep. Did you forget? That's right. David, our K-12 Judeo-Christian online school is enrolling right now for our students for the upcoming fall. And so if you want to find out some more information about it, all you have to do is request a free information packet. Well, how do you do that? All you have to do then is go to freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. And make sure, this is very important, make sure to say that you heard about Freedom Project Academy through Educated, this show right here. And because we want to, we have a little competition going like, who, who like let everyone know about the school and- Just mention Educated. We want, we want to win. We want to brag around the office against everyone else. Yes, we are highly competitive. At least I know I am. David, you're pretty decently- A little bit. A little bit, a little bit. We're going to do this. Now, on to the story at hand. We have a Missouri school district who says the best way to educate your students on math or in math is obviously to add they and them because it's all about addition in math, right? Is that how it works? Oh boy. Uh, so you're supposed to add they, them pronouns and you're supposed to hire an interventionist to explain how you can fight racism and gender bias. Remember, David. Yes. Math is racist. That's what we know. Yes. So I'm going to read this slowly because you may not either understand or believe that this is actually a story and happening it's in Missouri. A Missouri school district plans to include the personal pronouns they, them, in math problems. Mm, yes. Math yes. problems. Yes. And hire certified teachers as, quote, math interventionists to do what? Ready? To fight racism and gender bias Katie, in math class after a curriculum evaluation. So a uh, persistent myth within math education is that since numbers are universal, math classrooms are objective and free of bias. This is the Webster Grove School District's math program evaluation now. It was presented uh, last week during a Board of Education meeting. And another quote from the article, look at the equity considerations mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. katie yes, yes. Uh, a persistent myth uh, did I read? research shows clearly that any space where learning occurs is neither free of bias nor resistant to oppressive systems such as racism sexism classism or xenophobia that was apparently susan bergman the district's math curriculum director and uh, she wrote in a PowerPoint presentation reviewed by the Daily Signal. Ah, uh, yes, because in math, it is all about equity. Not what is equal, but what is equitable. So you can't say two plus two equals four. It's equitable, so... Two plus... Two, or would it be two they plus two them e equity... Four, they. I'm not sure. I wonder how. I don't know how two and two and four identify. So I. Well, DEI not able has to, to work in here somewhere. DEI and CRT. That. That's five. Five letters. No, five, wait a minute. Five, six. Yeah, that's six letters. DEI mm, CRT. But the that's don't, six. Just, they don't add up. LGBTQ. So that's another five. So that's eleven. So, we're see. We're working out a math <laughs> problem math right problem. now. Yes, and uh, they're all about addition <laughs> here. I'd say we should need some subtraction from at least this school district who is putting this nonsense out there. We've heard about math interventionists being hired. I mean, it, the long and short of it is our students cannot do math as is. And they, meaning these woke people, not the ones who identify as they, uh, but the collective proper they, think that the reason our children do not understand math is because it's racist and sexist. Do you think really that's the reason that our kids don't understand math? Or is it maybe because in math class they are trying to identify math numbers and all other sorts of things with certain pronouns instead of focusing on how two plus two equals four? Could it be that? Hmm. 
Or am I being too, I don't know, what is math, logical? Am I being too logical about that? You know, I think it's pretty, when you say that, like with such just confidence, I think, and maybe even arrogance to a say little that. Bit of arrogance, to say that, or a lot. Of, I'll say five plus five equals ten. <gasps> now, the, I don't know. That's Are that's sure? uh, that's pretty bold and arrogant to say. Mm, that is true. Uh, it's pretty permanent. It it's is. almost like if it's a fact. Ah. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure we can. We it's got to be more about feelings. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. got like social emotional learning. That yeah. was part of this too. Yeah. I mean, when we went to school, it was, it was a horrible time. We had to learn about math. <laughs> Facts, Actually, as they before, called them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, I felt the oppression. That was before test scores plummeted in How the United States of entertainment. How would we know? Because we don't know numbers, so I guess we don't know if they plummeted or not. We don't know what that even means. I think we know. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know, know if they know. They, again, the proper they, not oh, the they, geez. them, how they identify they. Oh, my goodness. We're having too much fun with this one because it's silly. It is silly. This it's whole sad. thing is silly, but when it actually equates to a lack of education for real students, then it is sad. So Webster Grove School District is in a wealthy suburb of St. Louis. Okay. Of course it's in a wealthy suburb of St. Louis. Where is a lot of this nonsense actually happening? In, in the big the cities. wealthy areas yep. of these cities, because guess who runs these cities, or runs the schools, the wealthy ones, the woke. The elites. I'm gonna go ahead and say it, the woke white women, who probably all hold advanced degrees or are and or are university professors. Mm. So uh, they're Triple claiming, W, woke oh, white yeah, women. Woke white women. Ooh, woke white women. www.woke.com. <laughs> All right. Anyway, they're claiming, this school district is claiming that they will be providing their students, particularly black students, with opportunities for mathematics socialization and mathematics identity development. In this school district, there are 10 schools serving more than 4,400 students. How are they not being a bunch of racists for assuming that our students, all of them, cannot do math unless we tailor it specifically based on race? Who are the racists in this instant? Is it the math or is it these woke, wealthy white women? who I'm assuming are the ones who are actually doing this. Triple W. Triple w. Um, by the way, the um, district also posted a moving toward equity guide on its website. That was prior to the 2018-2019 school year, uh, saying that the school system offers anti-racism training mm -hmm, yes. to staff on eliminating so-called implicit bias, uh, holds social justice workshops, of course, on privilege and oppression. That's mm. right. Yes. Uh, eliminating so-called, well, I already said that, and has an equity officer position in the district's oh, PTO. Of parent, course there teachers, is. No, organization. Uh, yes. And according to the district, of course, <clears throat> under their equity considerations, yes. uh, based on our surveys of our learners, we need to include they, them pronouns in our word and contextual problems. Not just he, she, because that's what's distracting to them. Oh, I can't do this math problem because it says that Billy went to the store and he decided to buy three oranges and then he bought two apples. How much fruit does he have? I can't do it. I can't do the math. And uh, another bullet point says, we want students to see the beauty, joy, and connectedness of mathematics as a way to see, make sense of, and change our world. No, that is not what math's job is, but this is what they're doing. Okay, bullet point number three. Based on the surveys of their learners, they need to strengthen relationships between students and teachers helping to develop learners' mathematical identities. What, what? are, what what? are mathematical identities? What is a mathematical identity? Does everything... Another identity. It's another identity. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I mean, okay. I mean, I'm sure we'll do follow-ups on these types of stories, but still to come, we've got to move on. A school superintendent in Ohio is now allowing teachers to carry guns so their faculty and students have a fighting chance if they're ever faced with a shooter. That's coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Looking for a K-12 classical online school built on Judeo-Christian values? FPA is enrolling now for the fall. Request your free information packet at freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com.
Well, just the latest of a rural school district in uh, rural Ohio is uh, now letting anyone considering bringing a gun into the school to shoot up the school to simply say, no, maybe I won't do that because they are going to have at least one armed staff member at each of their four schools in their, again, rural school district. And I'm making note of how it's the rural school districts in Ohio that are doing this. Now, uh, what's the your district- point? Oh, no, I mean, what, you, you obviously feel something about the, the rural, rural schools school district. for doing this. Well, is this a common sense thing? This is a common sense, but it's also a where, how far away are the, like, the police departments and getting at, if something would happen, hmm. how quickly can they get to help right. those in need? Right. And this is the point that is being made by Superintendent Adam Wickham of the River Valley Local School District in Caledonia, Ohio, which is about an hour north of Columbus, if you know your geography, that is Ohio. Basically, in Ohio, every city name or rural, everywhere is na- starts with a C. <laughs> Cleveland, Cincinnati, Columbus, Caledonia. Should I keep going? Um, okay, so uh, the superintendent just confirmed a new policy in a recent interview where he said, our schools will no longer be soft targets and unprotected. Most active shooter events occur in areas of gun-free zones or with minimal safety measures in place. We want to ensure our schools will not be soft targets. Now, they have two elementary schools and then a middle and a high school because okay. it's smaller district, so right. that makes sense. Um, he also stated that armed staff in each school is necessary in a remote village like Caledonia, which may not be easily accessible for law enforcement in the event of an active shooter, as happened in Parkland, Florida, Uvalde, Texas, and most recently recently, as we all know, Nashville, Tennessee. Now, Wickham said that as a rural community, response times can often be minutes away in the event of an actor shooter. The use of armed staff in our buildings can potentially save lives by providing a more immediate response to the threat. Fact check true. I mean, yeah. uh, and, and, and again, this is saying there's going to be at least one armed staff member. Now, others will be able to be armed if they so choose they are not being forced to do it it is an option and it's not like they're just going to right. oh you want a gun here you go I have actually, some fun i actually heard that argument it was probably on a clip i saw on on the line from the view or something they're saying they're gonna force all these teachers to buy guns and carry guns no no yep that's not what well this, and and, and then the argument is oh it's so unsafe for all these people to have the guns. Oh, it's it's not safe in the schools and all this and like accidental if it like a gun would go off accidental all this. I and it's it, since you brought up the view, I'll bring up the ladies of the view. <laughs> they are surrounded all day every day by security, by armed yep, that's security. Right. Emphasis on armed security uh, guards. Has anything any, anything happened to them? Hello, yet? celebrities. Hello, hello. hello. Uh, people in the media. Yeah, you're building as armed guards. You you have security. A lot of people have them at their home. And also, just to make this point, and here's the deal: I'm not a big fan of guns. I'll admit it. I'm not like I don't want guns. Like I just don't personally. My you know my father and my brothers and that they hunt. Good. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say you can't have it. And if you think about it this way, let's just play devil's advocate here. Say yes, a teacher has a gun. It goes off in a school. What's the worst thing that could happen? Right? Accidentally, the gun goes off. Tragedy would be if, if someone was shot and killed, right? Yeah. I'm just going to do math, which is not racist, by the way. One person would be killed, okay? But if you have a school that is gun-free zone, yeah. come, basically stating, come on in, and then you have a shooter who intentionally is there to shoot someone or more people, how many, again, how many victims would there be? Handful? Could be six, seven, eight? Who knows? One... Six, seven, eight. Well, I'm, I'm just doing simple math on this one. Does that make sense to everyone else? Well, you're talking common sense, so uh, yes, yes, I hope it makes sense. Um, obviously, the designated teachers and staff, has to, they have to first go through firearms training in accordance with a new state law. Um, but I want to jump down to this part where it's really there's, there's this political divide. It, oh, yes. it uh, falls on party lines. Every Democrat in the Ohio House and Senate voted against this bill, well, nearly every Republican voted for it. Um, so it did pass because the Republicans hold a sizable majority. Yeah, and the in bill, yeah, the bill oh. we're talking about okay. is from uh, the last June when Governor uh, Mike DeWine, who's you know obviously a Republican, signed the bill that stated that individual school districts have the options 
to have armed staff on school campuses. Now, it's Ohio, and so far they have 22, but now 23 with this latest school district. Mm -hmm. So 23 of the 611 school districts in the state are having armed staff. At school and not school. all the staff, just those. Just that at are least designated. one. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, and but again, like you said, they have to be trained. Yeah. There is training that it goes into it. You know, you made a good point. I mean, you're you're thinking if there's one teacher, one at least one staff member of the gun, someone comes in to 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 want to do damage or to hurt people. There, they could potentially be stopped at some point well before the police would have arrived. You know, in most cases. And and the thing is. Just knowing that there could be one, there could be more, they don't know who has the gun, who is armed, is deterrent enough. But saying, gun-free zone, is a welcoming sign. That's all I'm trying to say. But we're going to move on. Because coming <laughs> up, we have a middle school in Washington State that's going viral after parents learned the school had a yes licking contest. What? Licking. Like, Yep. Licking contest as part of a pep rally, because why not? Um, we're just going to say that nobody considered the uh, optics of this little game before they decided, let's just do it. Stay with us. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code EDUCATED. That's E-D-U-C-A-T-E-D. -E EDUCATED. Support this show and a great American company. Let's just say that this next story is gross. And obviously by anyone who is um, not an idiot, it's just a dumb idea to do. But here we have Desert Hills Middle School in Kennewick, Washington, where they had teachers and students participate in the licking contest. And they thought that was a good idea. But the adults at that school are clear, clearly idiots. Um, so around spring break time, school's kind of maybe, you know, it's close to spring break. We want to do something fun, have a little pep assembly, do something fun. Uh, because so it's you all might about have, fun. It's all, <laughs> remember, it's all about entertainment at school. Uh, they might have a, a little field day type of events. And usually it's like, oh, let's have the, the teachers versus students do things, ha, ha, ha. Okay, well, here's what happened at this school. They decided to have a contest where they used two panes of plexiglass in a wood frame, and they set it up. One side is a teacher, one side is a student. Um, and then they had marshmallow cream smeared on each side of that plexiglass, Ugh. and they each then licked it. And as about, you're about to see, I'm warning you now, don't watch if you're like easily disturbed with these. Just, here you go. Yeah. Now here's a look at that video now going viral. Now you can see students and staff at Desert Hills Middle School licking whipped cream off of plexiglass on each side of it. And this all happened at an assembly before spring break. And it's now getting a lot of play on social media. April tells me a lot of middle school parents share her same concerns. Most of her friends are 12, you know, 11, 12. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if those kids can see a problem from, you know, pretty much the same angles that I did, you know, that it looks inappropriate, um, definitely not sanitary. You know, I feel like if, if a 12-year-old or a 12-year-old can grasp that, then, then yeah, it's a little, it's a little concerning that I'm trusting those people <laughs> with my kid, you know, that, that can't even kind of make that good decision on their own. Washington, yeah. uh, first of all, Makes it was sense. gross. One of the states that was very uh, strict, I believe, with the COVID policies and the keeping a distance of six feet. Well, there you go. You're, well, you're licking through plexiglass and it's, it's talking about a, unsanitary yes, and but gross. They're, they are being resourceful because they are probably reusing that plexiglass that kept those people six feet apart. And now we're just being resourceful, saving the earth. So what was the point of it? Did, were, there were four different blobs of yep, so marshmallow you had to or whatever. The marshmallow cream off the fastest, I'm guessing. So here's the deal. What is this? Listen, listen, listen right now. Actually, looks like wrong. I think it was a good idea. Yes, what? It looks so wrong. Yeah. It looks so wrong. No, I mean, oh, okay. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about okay. this. This is just one of those those idiotic ideas that, yeah, who who thought this was a good thing for kids in a school to watch and do and participate in? Yeah. So as you listen closely, 
when you have middle schoolers, because they tape everything, because everything's about social media, uh, they tape it, and even they are confused, grossed out, wondering who thought this was a good idea. It's so weird. Yeah, of course it's weird and gross and disturbing when you have adult males and females licking a plexiglass, and you then have teenagers also licking the plexiglass on the same side or opposite side but like realistically they are separated by millimeters like that is gross and that is weird and i don't understand why anyone would think it's a good idea and so once it went viral then of course oops we got to walk it back because what's fascinating is the principal who actually was seen in the video like taping it or he's taking pictures of it because he thought it was a good idea at that time uh his name is casey grant he suddenly decided oh no mistakes were made and david since there are two people okay. both the principal and the superintendent made some lovely comments about the situation who would you like to be today i'll be casey okay <clears throat> casey's comment all right on behalf of desert hills middle school i would like to apologize for the activity that took place during our recent assembly as building principal i take ownership for the events that occur in my school and i recognize the impact that this situation has had on our school community i am committed to the safety of our students and staff and will ensure that all future activities meet the highest professional standards and adhere to district policy mm. again i apologize that this incident occurred and for the negativity brought to the desert hills community oh oh that was very nice very nice very yes. nice thank you but that's not strong enough no mr principal okay. i mean i know you're trying to cover your back end there but uh well, the superintendent also needs to cover the back end of all the rest of the school district. So superintendent Dr. Tracy Pierce said, this activity does not reflect the high standards we hold for our staff members as outlined in district policy. The content of a video being shared on social media is highly concerning and the situation is currently being investigated by the district. Pause. They investigate the situation. Oh, they're they're, <laughs> they're, being, they're investigating. While there is no question about the appropriateness of the activity and its negative impact, after thoroughly investigating how and why this particular activity took place, it is clear that the intent of the activity was innocent and not ill-intended. There is zero evidence to suggest or support that this was in any way grooming activity on the part of organizers or participants. That being said, the fact that the activity was planned, occurred, and not stopped shows a lack of so sound discernment and good judgment, and the activity is not aligned with district expectations. End scene. Now, David, <laughs> during both of those non-apology apologies, did you hear about anything that would happen as some sort of punishment? Or well, of course not. You acknowledgement no. that in the future this will not happen other than to say I apologize it for it happening like we will never do this again and we all will go through training shouldn't they no. have to go so through some sort of training no. because of this no, no. nothing nothing no, well nothing. they shouldn't have to no, no. do that because, because it was innocent. they acknowledged that it did not reflect the high standards of that particular school and that sad yeah yeah exactly no two looks about it. All right. Well, we've got our latest Babylon Bee headlines to discuss next, so stay right there. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. So before we wrap another show, Let's take a look at everyone's favorite satire site, the Babylon Bee. Here are this week's top five Babylon Bee headlines. So again, uh, Katie has not seen these beforehand, and we're going to start with drunk Irishmen say they understood Biden's Dublin speech perfectly. Next. Fetterman filibusters Senate for seven hours while attempting to say 
Uh, hello. Next, damning leak reveals Matt Walsh knew what a woman was this whole time. Next, Hasbro introduces new transition me Elmo doll. And finally, Disney World forced to close after DeSantis builds elementary school within 1,000 feet. <laughs> Katie, oh, there's a couple of them there. There's a couple gonna, of them. Oh, this is a tough one. This week, a lot of they're hitting a lot of social issues on this one. Um, yep. Man. Well, okay, I think the Fetterman one was absolutely ridiculous and like, oh, low blow, but also accurate mm -hmm. because it's sad what's happening to that man. Yeah. And the fact that he is being like, he's weekend at Bernie's, but so is our president. So it's kind of the same difference. Um, and I just watched the movie Zootopia. And if you've ever watched it, there's a sloth in it at, who works at the DMV. And so it takes forever, you know, to get anything done. Like, right. like haha, right. the DMV. Right, right. It's Fetterman. Uh, Inadvertently, so yes, doing a Fetterman a sloth. He's a he kind of is a sloth. Okay. So, I mean, that one, I think, I'm going to go with that one, but I like this week, solid week. What do you think? Well, I was tempted to go with the Transition Me Elmo oh, doll. Uh. Oh, goodness. But I really I really liked the one about Matt Walsh. Yeah, that um, is solid. The, the leak. It was leaked out that Walsh really knew what a woman was the whole time. <laughs> because that if you haven't seen that documentary, you guys, What to. is a Woman?, you it, really need to go see that. It's just, it, it is fantastic. It's like entertaining and it's fun. And that's what we're all about. And, and you're but shaking your head the whole time it, too. Yeah, going, but then it's are, also sad and yeah. quite like revealing as yep. to what's what's happening and what the truth is out there. So, wow. Yep. Good job though, Babylon B. You did, yes. you did swell this week. As always. But that's going to wrap up our top headlines of the week. More satire next time. Katie? All right. Well, since I know every one of you out there is a fan, if you could, you know, just maybe like or comment or share, share this video, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be swell as well. Now for David and myself, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you for supporting this show. Until next time, stay educated.